I'm reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along uh, in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Get the scriptures. Okay, we're going to be going through some scriptures, but... Um, Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Uh, dearly beloved sister sent this to me. Um, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's a surprise, surprise. But have you forgotten? What do, what do I mean by the asking you that? If you've studied anything about how the media operates and the propaganda and the psychological manipulation tactics which they employ, um, you see a pattern emerge, okay? Ever since the Jesuit order released their psychological operation called, originally called um, the Corona gonna get you, you know, the COVID-19 thing. Um, censorship. It was, uh, it was the star attraction of the world. And I believe from the very beginning, from the very beginning, that what the Jesuit order did was release a biological weapon onto uh, the populace of the world uh, and in order for them to create hysteria and that kind of stuff like that. Because there is something out there that people are getting sick from. Yes, there is. Yes, there is, which I believe, as I have believed from the very beginning, that it's a man-made biological weapon. But see, what has happened is the Jesuit order has employed what is called the Hegelian principle. They create a problem, okay? And then they come up with the solution, or they, they create a problem, a thesis. And then they come up with the solution, the anti-thesis. What does it mean to be anti? It means to be number one, against, and also number two, to replace, so that they may control the outcome of their little problem that they created, synthesis, okay? That is the Hegelian principle, okay? So what did they do? They created a problem, and they created a solution so that they can control the outcome. What is the controlled outcome that they wish to uh, bring about? His Holiness from Maine, about a couple of years ago, did a video where he gave documented proof by a military some odd website website called Diagle or Daggle or something like that. The link for that site will be in the description box, okay? And on, at that time when His Holiness from Maine did that video, he showed on this website Daggle or Diagle that by the, that they were predicting by the year 2025 that there was going to be about something like a major percentage of most of the populations of the world whoo, declining. Yes, yes. Now here's the interesting thing, okay? When he came out with that video, YouTube and a lot of other uh, uh, social media platforms pounced, pounced on it. Oh, evil, evil, yes. And what's interesting is you will see, because I'll put the link for you in the description box, the information that His Holiness shared with you, the Diago website has since expunged. Go figure that. But there will be another link in the description box where they show what Diago is expunged from that site. Okay? Information is, is still out there for you to see what they had once predicted, but is no longer available. That will also be in the description box for you, so you can look at it. So this website, Diagle, or Daggle, whatever you want to say, uh, predicted by 2025 a massive downgrading of the population of the world. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that very interesting? Hmm. And this video, which a beloved sister sent me, uh, we're going to look at, and they addressed this. 
and they make the uh, the appropriate tie-ins. They they make the appropriate tie-ins. But let's start out with some scripture. See, the media is Satan's outlet for mind control and uh, propaganda. All right. And we as the church of the living God, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore, in your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, right here, verse 4, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We are soldiers of Jesus Christ. Okay? Then the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but spiritual. Okay? Spiritual. All right, we wage a war in prayer because it is a spiritual battle, not a physical battle. It is a spiritual battle, okay? But we have, we who are of the church of the living God, we have been called to be soldiers, ambassadors for Jesus Christ, having the word of uh, reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation, preaching on to the lost and warning the loss of the impending doom and judgment that is about to come upon this world. Okay, that is our that is our job. That is what we all of us of the Church of the Living God. That is what we are all called to do in whatever position it is that the Lord has put you in. Okay, that's what we are called to do. But see, Satan's tactic is distraction. Okay, right away when they when the Jesuits released COVID nineteen on the world. Okay, what were they pushing right away? The steel of the Jesuit poniard, the vaccination, okay, the vaccination. I can say this now. If I would have come out with this, if these people would have come out with this video, like even a year ago, YouTube would have pounced, would have taken it down. But they're not now. Why? Mission accomplished. They were able to inoculate, if you were as many people as they could with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And what we're going to look at in this video documents and they make the link that, hey, it's called SADS, Sudden Adult Death Syndrome. Huh. Healthy people dying. And what's the link that they all had, all have? Steel of the Jesuit poniard. Let's see what happened. After they reached their number of inoculations, what happened? Distraction came. You'll notice that in the news, they have not uh, abandoned uh, the poison crown. They haven't abandoned it yet. Okay? It's still there to be used as a future narrative. Okay? They have not abandoned it yet. But what has happened? They, they achieved their objective. They got that poison out into as many people as they could. Okay? They have. So now, the damage is done. So now, if people come out and start warning about this stuff, hey, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like when people speak out against the Roman Catholic Church. This is their hour and the power of darkness. Man will not be able to stop Roman Catholicism. Only the Lord in Revelation chapter 18 is going to stop Roman Catholicism. All we can do as a church of the living God is make known the ways of the harlot unto the people. That's all we can do. And warn them and give them truth. But see, see, and that's, that's what's interesting. When you go after to uh, expose and to make people aware of the daughters of the whore, which the whore, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, still has a purpose for, they pounce on that. Because, see, if you want to go, you go for the head of the snake, not the body. But, see, this is their hour and the power of darkness. Man is not going to stop Roman Catholicism. The 
Lord will. But see, when you speak, for example, Islam, okay? Mystery Babylon has a purpose for Islam, for the Muslim, the sons of Ishmael. There's a purpose there. So when you as a church of the living God go to speak truth and to warn the sons of Ishmael and to scripturally warn others of what is coming because of this, they pounce on that because they still have a plan for that daughter of theirs. But see, the damage is already done. Like I said, even a year ago, this video would have been taken down. It would have been. But see, the damage is already done. The damage is already done. And we as a church of the living God, no man that worth entangleth, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Colossians chapter 3, just verses 1 and 2. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, born again, saved, converted of the church of the living God, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. Now this doesn't mean that we are flippant, care less about what is going on in the world. But see, we don't get fixated on these things of the world. Because when you do, your focus can be taken away from where your focus ought to be upon. Just like Peter uh, walking on the water to go to Jesus. And he saw the winds boisterous. And he began to sink. And he's like, Lord, save me. And the Lord grabbed him. And he said, why dost thou doubt? Because Peter saw the wind boisterous. He took his eyes off of Jesus. Now, like I said, we're not supposed to be flippant. Because Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. You know, we are in the world. We are not of the world. See, okay, that's how that works. All right? Okay, you with me? But we are not to set our affections. We are not to be taken in by these things of the world. And go to John chapter 14 now. And see, this is a ploy of Satan that he uses through the media. Scare, fear-mongering, to get people into uh, submission, to go to him, not to the Lord. Because see, the Jesuits who control everything, because the Lord has allowed them to control, okay, the Jews are not, in, are not the head, okay? It's the Jesuits, all right? You got to remember that, okay? John chapter 14 Verses 27 on to verse 30. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And what peace did the world give unto these people about this psychological operation, which they, the Jesuit order, created, and they, I do believe, that they uh, released a biological weapon of their own creation. But what was the peace that they gave to these people? The CDC, trust in us. We know what's best for you. Take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Take it. And all the research that was out there that shows that in animal trials, within four to five years tops, was the life expectancy rate. Oh, Brad, you're fear-mongering, am I? <laughs> Wait and see, buddy boy. Wait and see. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. The soul is greater than the physical body. Okay? The Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. The Word made flesh is the body. God the Father is the soul. We're made in the image of God, okay? And now I have told you, before it come to pass, that when it comes to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The prince of the power of the air 
the little G God, the God of this world, who is who? Lucifer, Satan, okay? As given unto him for judgment against this world, okay? All right? Now, now let's continue here. We as the church of the living God, we as the church of the living God, go to back to 2 Timothy chapter 1, just one verse, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The fear there is not is the fear of the world. We, when we are saved, born again, converted, and the Lord saves us, okay, we fear the Lord. It is the fear of the Lord that you call upon. It's because of the fear of the Lord that you call upon his name. When you come to him broken of your self-righteousness and having contrition, godly sorrow, because it's your fault that he died. Okay? The fear of the Lord. It's what this is talking about. Spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. The spirit of this world. Which the news media, as led by the Jesuit order, the army of mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church. Okay? We don't have the spirit of fear. You're lost. You have the spirit of fear. You have the spirit of this world. Okay? And also, too, Psalm 1. 12. Psalm 112. Okay. Psalm 112. Verses 6 on to verse 8. Surely he shall not be moved forever. Forever. It doesn't say that you won't be moved. It says that you will not be moved forever. Okay. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. And the righteousness that we have as a church of the living God, it's not our own righteousness because we keep the law. It's the, it's the imputed righteousness of Christ unto us because we came unto him his way. Okay? His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Yeah, we're not afraid. We're not afraid. We ought not to be afraid, I should say of the things of the world, of the things that you who are lost, fear. Okay? Why? His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he, he see his desire upon his enemies. Okay? You see what I did there? Yeah? Verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Now let's read that in the appropriate context. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. See, we trust in the Lord. But see, you of the world who fell for the propaganda of the Jesuit order, Satan and his army, okay? Your trust is in man. Your trust is in that poison that they gave you. Your trust is in the experts. And not in the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? That's what your trust is in. And because, because you have made a covenant with death. And we got to remember, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 on to verse 9. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Humble yourselves. You go to the Lord thinking that you're a good person and that, well, God obviously saw something good in me, good enough to die for me. You're not broken of your self-righteousness. Okay? That self-righteousness has to be buried in the dung. Okay? You understand? That self-righteousness has to go. And only the Lord can truly eradicate that in you. And that begins by you humbling yourself. Okay? Verse 8. Be sober. 
Not messed up in the la cabeza. Not glazed over with a pedophile fog of propaganda and psychological manipulation. Okay? Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, your adversary, the, our adversary is the church of the living God, and yours too, lost person. You're, ta you're in his snare. You're taken uh, by his will. At his will, I should say. He's your adversary. He wants to bring you to hell with him. Okay? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. As a roaring lion, when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, comes back at his second coming with us who get redeemed, he's going to be coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? But as a roaring lion, counterfeit, anti, which means to be against and to replace. Okay? All right? First Kings. Have you forgotten? First Kings chapter 20. How, how quickly after they got all, they rolled out the barrel and all this stuff they had, they have achieved their objective. Okay? A certain amount of the population of the world has been inoculated already. They have achieved their objective. And then what happens? You are distracted with what? Putin. Putin, right? Putin's war. Have you looked at uh, uh, what Ukraine was like before that, by the way? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Okay? What else were you distracted with here in America? Will Smith. Johnny Depp. America is the mob. Conjure magic for us. And we will be distracted. Take away our freedom and instill our entertainment. They, the Jesuits, will give us death. We will love them for it. That's from the movie Gladiator, by the way. Yeah. But 1 Kings chapter 20. Once they reach their objecti objectives... It's still there to be used as a narrative. It's still there. But they distract you. Now they go on to something else. But that's always there to bring back up. And by 2025, 1 hmm, Kings chapter 20, verses 22 on to verse 25. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go, strengthen thyself. And mark, and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come up against thee. Have you forgotten? You think it's gone away? They, they've, they're holding it back here to be used at a later date. It hasn't gone away, dear friend. Have you forgotten? And the servants of, their, of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse, and chariot for chariot, and we will fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice and did so. Why did we read this? Regrouping. Regrouping. See, the psychological operation was just the beginning stage. It's not over yet, dear friend. But see, you're being distracted by the media. You're being distracted. So when it comes back, you're not going to be prepared. Now let's get to this video. 
As we've reported, we have a lot of excess mortality around at the moment. In England and Wales, it's been running at about a thousand extra deaths every week, all spring and summer. There's a lot of SADS, sudden adult death syndrome. What are the symptoms of that? Well, the first symptom is that you're strolling around perfectly healthy. The second system is that you're dead. All very sudden. Wherever you live, just pick up your local paper from the weekend in the sports section. Take a look at this story. Jason Jenkins, the Dolphin Senior Vice President of Communications. That's the Miami Dolphins. It's American football, an unwatchable sport, but these guys don't deserve to die over it. Yeah. But the Senior Vice President died suddenly in the hours before Miami's game Saturday against the Eagles, the team. 47 years of age. One year younger than I am. Okay? Hmm. Perfectly healthy. I have a heart condition. <laughs> but this guy was perfectly healthy. Hmm announced he was 47. That was Saturday. Monday, in the movie news, actress and model Charlby Dean died suddenly at age 32, People Magazine confirmed Tuesday. Her breakthrough movie, Triangle of Sadness, opens next month. It got an eight-minute standing ovation at the Cannes Film Festival and won the Palm d'Or, and everyone agreed it was going to make her a star. But no, she's dead. That was Monday. On Tuesday, well, we reported last week on a suddenly dead women's footballer in uh, Belfast. Here is another in Kent. Tributes pour in for Aylesford football club payer Daniel, Danielle Cubitt after unexpected and sudden death. Also from the sports pages, captain of junior hockey team in Air Ontario. Get a load of this. Get a load of this. Oh, that's a part of the world I know very well. Captain of junior hockey team, dead at age 19. Eli Palfreyman died during the game, 19 years old. The old Fleet Street rule was that it took three to make a trend. We have a lot more than three dead young sportsmen, but no reporters seem minded to investigate. We have official statistics from the Canadian province of Alberta saying that the leading cause of death in Alberta is now cause unknown. Cause unknown or a cause that they don't want to be known. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, this, this is evolutionary in its mindset. Kill off the weak that the strong may survive. The less people on the earth, the less people that that man of sin, the son of perdition, will have to worry about. The less people, the easier it will be for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to govern. Okay? Okay? But instead of trying to pin down what all those unknown causes might actually be, there are lots of ludicrous internet fact checkers who say there is no hard proof this is anything to do with you know what. Kathy Gingell is the founder and editor of The Conservative Woman. And you, uh, you, you think, Kathy, that uh, there are people out there who actually might have found some causation. Yes, exactly. So everyone will argue that it's correlation or temporal mm. association. That's the medicine and health regulatory authority favorite word, temporal yeah. causation. Well, yes, actually it is temporal yeah. because in that time space, they die. Yes. You know, come on. In that time space, they die. Why is this? Why is this? Okay. Why is this? Because People don't want to trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. People don't want to trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. So Satan is there to give them an alternative himself. Okay? Go to Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9. Okay? Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9 verses 8 on to verse 15. The, um, the parable, if you will, of, um, of uh, Jotham, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, let me see. Yeah, the parable of Jotham. When Abimelech, Abimelech 
went and killed his brethren. You can read the context on your own time. Judges chapter 9, verses 8 on to verse 15. The trees went forth on a time to anoint the king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. Now, if the trees talking about people. It's talking about people. Okay? But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness whereby, wherewith by me they honor God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said, Unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, a bramble bush that could, you could see through and that will uh, is easily ignited with a spark. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. So, what do we see here? What do we see here? Okay? The olive tree wouldn't do it. The fig, the vine, no. But the bramble, olive, fig, vine, okay? We can get off on so deep a thing on that, but we're not going to, okay? But the bramble, the least of all those things that you can, a bramble bush, which is easily ignited, okay? You can see through it. There's, it's, it's, it's useless. There's no shade. There's no cover in it. Okay? You, the lost world, have chosen the bramble rather than faith on our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And 1 Samuel chapter 11. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 3. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. Poke your eye out, and then come, and I'll, I'll be with you. Take that steel of the Jesuit poniard. Take the mark of the beast. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel. And then if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. In Zechariah chapter 11, Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Fool says in his heart there is no God. Someone who is foolish is living, behaving as if there is no God. Okay? For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that are cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe be woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock, and the sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. And this thing about the right eye, you'll you see this constantly in uh, Hollywood propaganda and advertisements. Okay, but. That leaveth the flock and doesn't heal or doesn't look. Uh, and what is that in verse 16? Uh, which shall not visit those that be cut off. Hey, the, the mission has been accomplished. The poison is in circulation. I'm, I'm sick. I'm dead. Well, hey, what can we do? 
foolish shepherd. The foolish shepherds, like the Catholic disease creators, okay? The Jesuit order. All right? Let's continue. On, hmm. um, but we can't look at it because there's every other reason for it. And if we look at last year, there are just hmm. as many. And, and, and people constantly love to do the correlation hmm. argument. The correlation hmm. isn't causation. Well, there, there's a ger new German paper that's the most extraordinarily detailed paper, hmm. a statistical analysis of all the German death data. And I think they're probably rather better at this than we are hmm. for whatever reason. And what's hmm. good about for whatever reason, computing the data of the uh, Nazi concentration camps and stuff like that. Yeah. See that little swipe she did? At this paper, they've used every type of statistical method to look at the excess death data. There are various, if you're a statistician, you can choose various sort of type of models or approaches. Yeah. On each one, it comes out the same. They have, have to explain this excess mortality in the younger age groups mm. um, that cannot be explained by COVID deaths and cannot really be explained by that much else because it is so unusual and it relates to the... Um, months of maximum vaccination. This video is available on YouTube. And uh, let me see. Um, 285,000 views, September 1st. Okay? Now, those of you who have memory, had this been going on, had this video come out during the time when they were pressing, pushing, this video here on YouTube would have been cut off, done, blocked, and they would have taken them down. But now they can come out with it. Because why? Because they have achieved some of the, the majority of their objective. That's why. That's why, dear friend. That's why. Okay? Okay? And you, dear man, woman, who have fallen for this, you need to realize the reality of your situation. Okay? Uh, go to Isaiah chapter 28, just two verses. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 14 and 15. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, because ye have said we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves under the instruments of a foolish shepherd. And you have trusted in the covert of the bramble. There are those of my own family who's got that thing. And there are some of your family as well. Time's running out, people. You need to get saved. You don't, ra you don't realize the severity of your situation. Because why? Why? We have made lies our refuge. You trust in the doctors with the degrees on their walls. And don't want to come to the true Lord Jesus Christ. They offer you a Christ. Who's not angry. Who loves you unconditionally. Who doesn't judge you. Who tells you you're a good person. That's not the God of the scriptures dear friend. It's not the God of the scriptures. But what. Okay. But what do you do now? Okay. You're being made aware. What do you do? Here's what, unfortunately, most people will do. Isaiah chapter 22, 12 on to verse 14. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying us oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm a goner. What good is it going to do me if I go to the Lord now? So, yes, light it up, boy. Get, get your, drink it up. Live it up. 
Because tomorrow I die. You're not taking into account your eternity. Because you, you think you're going to be worm food, right? And isn't it interesting, that phrase, worm food, right? With these atheists. Well, I, when I die, I'm going to go into the ground and I'm going to be worm food. And isn't it interesting that our Lord Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 9 says, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. Isn't that interesting? But yet the atheist said, well, when I die, my body goes into the ground and I become worm food. But our Lord says, your worm dieth not. Isn't that interesting, huh? You're not taking into account of eternity. Okay, you're mad, insane, if you believe in reincarnation. Okay, it's, that's nonsense. You're not taking in account of your eternity. So only two options. You're going to be either either going to be spending eternity in the lake of fire or with our Lord Jesus Christ. Which one is it? Which one is it going to be, Jack? In verse 13. Or in verse 14, excuse me. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Doesn't have to be that way. Does not have to be that way, dear friend. Let's continue. Let's continue. Right, and 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 uh, and, and because it's happening in the young and middle age yes. as well, it's not something that can be explained in the same way as they explain COVID. There was a Dutch study as well, uh, which basically tracked uh, the. Uh, the the excess mortality according to when they'd introduced the vaccines and the booster shots yes. in each of these various Dutch. A year ago, that guy would have said that on this very platform, they would have boom took it down. You know that. Why can they do it now? Because again, they have reached their objective. There's just. A ticking time bomb. But you've forgotten. Haven't you? Because you're distracted by Will Smith and Johnny Depp. By sports. By the new Hollywood movie. By wars and rumors of wars. Made to take your eye off of where it needs to be upon. You need to get saved. There are some out there who are strong enough who will survive. But a majority of them are not going to. You need to repent. You need to come to the Lord Jesus. Come, let us reason together, you and I. For it's too late. Before you reach a point of no return. And there is such a point. Okay. Areas. Yeah. You do get the sense, though, that there's a great institutional reluctance yeah. to do something like that in the UK. A abs absolutely. They, they don't want to do, first of all, they've never wanted to do a risk benefit on the vaccines mm. themselves. We've known for a long time now that the, that the Pfizer data was very sort of misinterpreted at the beginning. They weren't honest about it. And the actual efficacy of the vaccines low and more and more stuff's let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Like I said, a year ago, this stuff would have come out on this very platform, uh, despite the fact that they got 250,000 views, whatever, how many subscribers, a cash cow onto them, it didn't matter because they were still trying to fulfill their objective. But they've done it now. They have reached the point of their objective, which is good, so people can come out now and speak about it. But now, for many of you, it's too late. Your only hope is Jesus Christ. He's your... And all the distractions with all these uh, other people, with all the distractions that are coming on here on YouTube, with all these Jesuit coadjutors and stuff like that.
come out about the number of deaths were higher in the first rollout of the vaccines. We have our own data in this country that shows on yellow card reporting mm -hmm. there already nearly 2,300. Um, these are reports yeah. made by hospitals and doctors, vaccine-related deaths. Um, we, we, ha we suddenly find we've got six adolescent deaths slipped into the um, M MHRA tables. Mm. But th and this is where the German study is so interesting. It's the age groups. I mean, in this Breaking country, they don't even want to give us full age breakdown of death. No. I mean, they're really reluctant to give us any of the data that we need. Um, and it is an institutional reluctance. And shockingly, the mainstream media has gone along with it. So it's but left to... Because uh, it, it's all controlled by the Jesuit order. That's why. It's not the Jews, dear friends, that run the world. It's the Jesuits. Okay? Social we websites like ours to try and get investigating on what's happening. But there, there, are, there are, for example, it's not hard to find out there are far more, uh, well, you know, it depends how you define far more, but there are more dead teens than there should be. Yes. That's a terrible thing for any parent yes. to, like the, the parents of that 90... You, you might be saying, well, okay, that doesn't make sense evolutionary-wise, right? The kill the weak so the strong survive. They inoculate the youth, and if they're strong enough to survive it, hey, there you go for someone to be in the army of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Teen-year-old hockey yes. player. Uh, why? Why? You get the feeling that even the individuals affected by this are being somehow anaesthetized oh, into not rocking the boat. Yes, it's absolutely. And Rishi Sunak rather gave it away in in mm. that interview he gave mm. to Fraser Nelson. I mm. mean, it's very appalling mm. that we mustn't upset the narrative. The official number ten line is that we've got to make this seem like this is all scientific. Our policy, mm. uh, make it appear to appear. Scientific. In science, uh, trusting in science, falsely so called. Yeah. Because words were, I yeah, think. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been scientific. Because if it was a scientific, once you began getting 10 times the number of vaccine injuries than any other previous vaccines put together, mm. the alarm bells should have been ringing and you should, somebody should have been monitoring this. They mm. haven't been. Mm. They say they are, but there's no evidence that they're doing it in any way systematically. But so last year we had all the athletes' deaths and these mm. carry on. Mm. Suddenly they're dropping dead. Um, everyone says, oh, oh, it, it's, it's just complete coincidence. Well, this was ridiculous. Anyone looking at the statistical tables of athletes no. deaths going down over the years, sure, this was absolutely unexpected. I mean, no. it was far higher than before. Um, no. Then, then you get the sudden deaths. What do they call it? Sudden adult, sudden adult death, death, death syndrome. syndrome. Yeah. Um, Which it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Sudden adult death syndrome. Which, but it's had, what, what I, I mean, we just did, I guess you would call them minor celebrities, yeah. but they're prominent actresses, yes. uh, promising young yes. sportsmen. Uh, they're the what about the one who driveth the plow? Hmm? What about the one that works at the gas station? What about the single mother who's been lied to with their, their children? Hmm? What about them? What about the little person? Hmm? Oh, it's only the big shots that you hear of. The big, the sports, the celebrities, the heroes. But what about us common folk? What about us common folk? Sort of bit, or even Paul Lisa yeah. Shaw uh, uh, yes, of the BBC. the BBC. Why the BBC doesn't even care when it's no, uh, they, when it's their own colleagues? No, they just want to push the vaccines, and especially on pregnant women. And as you raised, you know, despite the fact that the Pfizer safety data has been there, saying there is no safety, mm. there is no evidence. We cannot say that this is a safe vaccine for for women who want to get pregnant or who are pregnant or no. are breastfeeding. Yet they still push it on the same yeah. people still. 
will push the vaccine? Um, when will there be Operation Backtrack? We're beginning to see Operation Backtrack on lockdown. When will there be Operation Backtrack on vaccination? Round the world, that there are excess deaths. It's not just this country. No. Round the world, there's declining fertility, and round the world, there are more stillbirths. Yeah. Uh, there are more stillbirths in this country. That was shown in the German study. Yeah. I mean, isn't this enough? Isn't this enough for well, a decent well, health minister? Yeah, yeah. We've got a new health minister. They don't last long, these guys. Why don't you make a difference yeah. instead of giving you ten dollar, ten pound? kettle rebates. Thank you very much, Kathy. We, I'd just like to have a little soupçon of conservatism from an alleged conservative government. Uh, this is... <laughs> well, hey, buddy, you, you got yourself <laughs> King Charles now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and incidentally, um, to someone who asked in the comments, uh, who mentioned John Nelson Darby, which I didn't set off. I'll get that really irritates me. To you, Mr. Blue Gun, whatever your name is, if you are watching, uh, you asked about uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two. You stopped at verse four, dear friend. Keep reading to at least verse twelve, and the he who now letteth will let. God is omnipresent, omnipotent. He is not going anywhere. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. What is the he? Who is the he? The church of the living God, the body of Christ. You need to keep reading, dear friend. Okay? Okay? Just, just, okay. So, keep reading. This is a terrible thing, what we're doing here. Dead children. Dead teenagers. Dead people in their 20s, 30s, 40s. It's terrible. Thank you very much, Kathy. It's always great to see you, even in trying. And there we go. There we go. I don't like the new version of OBS. But there you go. There you go. Jeremiah, chapter 35. Jeremiah chapter 35, one verse. Jeremiah 35, one verse. Verse 15. If I can get there. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. You have been warned. And also, Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 28. But they hearken not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that, that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. In Proverbs, 20, uh, Proverbs 8, verses 32 on to verse 36. Proverbs 8, 32 on to verse 36. Now therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways, the ways of the Lord. Hear instruction and be wise, wise, fearing the Lord. Unto, and unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So wise, wisdom, 
Okay? Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Whosoever loseth his life for my sake shall save it. Okay? He who findeth his life shall lose it. You find it in the world, you're done. But he who loses his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Find going to him on his terms. Relevant for this dispensation. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All that hate me love death. And that verse 36 is on my front door. All that hate me love death. You hate the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You hate the scriptures, the authorized version. You love death. Please consider, please at least consider your eternity. Where are you, what's going to happen to you when you die? That's a, that's a war that we're not going to escape from, dear friend. Where, where are you going to go? What's going to happen to you when you die? Time is running out. And if it goes as predicted by that Dagal Diagal website by 2025, are you going to be among that number? Or are you going to be among that small, infinitesimal number of those of the church and the living God? You might really want to consider these things before it is too late. It's going to be it for this video. Got other videos coming. Like I said, I'm going to be doing things differently around here for a little bit. I'm going to upload this video also on my backup channel. Okay? Um, I don't know because YouTube is... Um, <laughs> I don't know. If this gets taken down and I get a strike, I'll be doing videos on my other channel. Okay? But uh, this video will also be put on my backup channel as well. So, Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Time is running out. If you've taken nothing serious before in your life, at least take this seriously. You are being warned. See, we as the Church of the Living God... We, the Titanic is sinking. The Titanic was sunk by the Jesuits. The Titanic is sinking. Doomed. Doomed to go down. But we as the church of the living God, we are the ones who are still shoveling coals into the boiler for as long as we can until we're either redeemed, taken out of here, or the Lord says that's it. God help you.